Have you ever wanted to quickly and reliably extract nonlinear behavioral transistor models suitable for high power amplifier design? Or to present load reflection coefficients to your device in a test that are close to the edge of the Smith chart but realize that passive impedance tuners alone are not enough? Or to simply characterize the device performance by controlling load impedances at fundamental and harmonic frequencies? Then look no further than Mori Microwave's Hybrid Active Load Pool Solution. Hi, I'm Jonas Urbanas, I'm a senior product engineer with Mori Microwave. And today, I would like to present to you our Hybrid Active Vector Receiver Load Pool Solution with a large signal analysis option that enables high power harmonic load pool with a reflection coefficient magnitudes up to and even beyond one, time domain signal analysis at the vector calibrated DUT reference planes, and enhanced polyharmonic distortion or EPHD based behavioral transistor model extraction. All this and more is possible by using Mori Microwave's industry leading IVCAD device characterization and modeling software platform, latest generation passive impedance tuners, an AM3100 series PIV system, and Rodian Swartz 43 series ENA. Hybrid active load pool measurements are used to characterize microwave transistors and power amplifiers under large signal operating conditions by combining passive and active load pool techniques and presenting a set of controlled load impedances to a device under test while measuring a multitude of parameters at each impedance state. The combination of passive and active load pool techniques enables load reflection coefficient synthesis anywhere within the Smith chart by using the passive impedance tuner to pre-match the device under test and to reduce the required load amplifier power for active signal injection. Alternatively, passive impedance tuners can be used to control the device impedances at the fundamental frequency, while active injection is employed to tune the load impedances at harmonic frequencies. The latter configuration is easily achieved with a Rodian Swartz 43 series ENA with an enabled 4 source option. Furthermore, if IVCAD's large signal analysis or LSA option is used, time domain waveforms are readily available at the calibrated DUT reference plane. This enables the device dynamic load line plotting and facilitates the extraction of highly accurate EPHD based behavioral transistor models. Let us see how easy this is. First, we will bias our device. Then, we will set the desired input power for our load pool measurement. After that, we will define the impedance pattern we wish to present to our device at fundamental and harmonic frequencies. Finally, we will use the harmonic measurement data to plot the time domain, current and voltage waveforms at the measurement reference plane and extract the EPHD-based behavioral transistor models. Ready, set, go! To configure hybrid active load pool measurements with a large signal analysis option, we first need to start IVCAD, the industry's premier device characterization and modeling software suite powered by AMCAD Engineering. After correctly configuring each individual instrument in the setup and going through the vector receiver, power, and harmonic phase calibration steps, we can initialize the setup and perform load pool measurements. We will first perform the load pool measurement at the fundamental frequency as we have no prior knowledge of the optimum second and third harmonic termination impedances. To do this, we will disable the active second and third harmonic control in the tuner manager. Then we will bias our device. In this demonstration, a bias optimization feature is used, allowing to automatically set the device QS and bias point. After that, we define the desired load impedance pattern that will be presented to our device under test at the fundamental frequency and start the measurement. During the measurement, all the device parameters are computed in real time, listed in the table on the left hand side of the measurement window, and plotted on a Cartesian plot. The DUT input and load impedances are also measured for each power level and plotted on the two Smith charts at the top of the measurement window. After the measurement is finished, we can analyze the measurement data using IVCAD's advanced data visualization tools and plot the device parameter contours against the desired gain compression value. In this example, we are plotting the power added efficiency contours at the 3 dB gain compression point. Once we identify the optimum impedance at the fundamental frequency, which yields 62.3% PAE, we set the passive impedance tuner to present that impedance to the device under test in the tuner manager window and enable the active second harmonic impedance control. Then, in the local measurement setup window, we configure the second harmonic impedance sweep around the edge of the Smith chart and start the measurement. After the measurement, we again identify the optimum termination impedance for the second harmonic, which helps to push the device PAE up to 72.8%, set that impedance to be presented to the DUT in the tuner manager, enable the active third harmonic control, 
configure the third harmonic sweep at the edge of the Smith chart and start the measurement. After it is finished, we identify the optimum third harmonic termination impedance that further pushes the PAE to 75.3% and configure the final fundamental frequency local measurement where the second and third harmonic termination impedances are set to their optimum values. Once the measurement is finished, we can again plot the device PAE contours versus the gain compression to identify the optimum termination impedance at the fundamental frequency. As can be observed from the measured results, under the proper termination of the second and third harmonics, the optimum impedance at the fundamental frequency has shifted slightly on the Smith chart, and the PAE has increased from 62% during the first measurement to 76.3% during the final measurement. This highlights the importance of harmonic local measurements. Moreover, since the system was configured for large signal analysis, we can plot the calibrated time domain waveforms and dynamic load lines at the DUT reference planes. The time domain load pool data also enables an easy extraction of enhanced polyharmonic distortion based behavioral transistor models. To do this, we start the device behavioral model extraction tool with an IVCAD, load the dataset for which we want to extract the behavioral model, interpolate versus frequencies as needed, identify the kernels, and export the model. After that, the model is ready to be used in commercial circuit simulators. As can be seen from the simulated results, the model device response in blue shows an excellent agreement with the measurement results shown in red. So to summarize, LoadPool is a powerful tool to characterize the behavior of a device in the test under linear and non-linear operating conditions as a function of load impedance. Mori Microwave's hybrid active harmonic vector receiver load pool methodology allows to quantify the effects of harmonic termination impedances on the device performance at fundamental frequency and enables computation of various device parameters from vector measurements of incident and reflected waves at the calibrated DUT reference plane. Furthermore, hybrid active harmonic load pool measurements can be substantially simplified by the use of Rodian Swartz 43 series ENA as it offers four integrated, individually controlled sources that can be employed for active signal injection at fundamental and harmonic frequencies. For more information on this or any other device characterization solution, visit moriumw.com or contact your local field engineer. Thanks for watching.